This is the second video in a series I'm doing on what Hugh Ross says about human evolution. This one's going to be really fun. Okay, what is a Neanderthal? Um, a lot of dispute over what a Neanderthal is, and in fact, we talked a little bit about Neanderthals in Dallas, uh, which got into uh, some fairly decent controversy because young Earth creationists believe that Neanderthal is fully human. Old Earth creationists see Neanderthal as simply a bipedal primate akin to, say, um, orangutans or chimpanzees. Well, if that's true, then the YECs are sort of right this time because Neanderthals are fully human, just a different species of human than we are. Uh, we do not believe that they had a spirit. Um, we do believe that they were capable of using tools, but the interesting thing about Neanderthal is the evidence we have for tool use is barely that above what a chimpanzee is capable of doing. I know this lecture of his is fairly old, like maybe 10 years, but we've known for a long, long time that Neanderthals were a lot different than chimpanzees and orangutans and that they had really good tool-making abilities. So we'll just keep going here because it gets really good coming up. Um, and I think what, this, what got things a bit confused is Neanderthals overlap human beings by about 10,000 years. And Neanderthals, like chimpanzees, steal human tools and use them. Really? He's really going to go there? He's going to accuse Neanderthals of stealing tools from modern humans. Our common ancestor with Neanderthals left Africa, went to Europe and Asia, and evolved into Neanderthals over 400,000 years ago. He's really off on his dates a lot, and, and he's using really old data, but even though his lecture's old, the data he's using seems to be really old for the time. Um, current thought is that Neanderthals and Denisovans split almost 400,000 years ago. We don't see um, modern humans, even the earliest what we consider Homo sapiens, until just over 300,000 years ago, and really anatomically modern humans until about 195,000 years ago. So Neanderthals predate humans in Europe and Western Asia. There just were no modern humans for them to steal from. We did overlap with them, but we came to those areas a lot later. And so people presume that these Neanderthals are much more advanced in their tool capability than they really were. Uh, but if you look at what the Neanderthals were doing before human beings showed up, or in those regions where human beings had not yet uh, settled, uh, their tool use is, well, the most advanced you ever get is a Neanderthal taking a boulder and smashing that rock against another rock, getting a bunch of flakes, and using the flakes to scrape the flesh off bones. That's the most advanced tool use you see. You know, that is just flat out wrong. It is like Kent Hovind level wrong. Throughout the Neanderthal range, we see them making stone tools that were just as complex as what modern humans were making at the time. Not only that, they used a wide range of materials like bone and tusk. Whereas when human beings show up on the scene, you immediately see sophisticated tools, shovels and axes and hammers. Uh, you see needles for sewing uh, cloth together. Uh, pardon me? And jewelry, yeah. Neanderthals had no clothing, no jewelry. So think about this for a minute. All right, we share a common ancestor with them. They weren't stupid. At some point, any species of early human that migrated north where there were long, cold winters would have had to develop clothing to survive. And there is evidence that Neanderthals developed clothing. It may not have been just like ours. Now, New Scientist magazine did a short video that went with an article that they published a couple years ago, and we're going to look at that 30-second clip now. I'm glad they brought up eagle talons because there's great evidence that Neanderthals did accessorize with those as well as teeth, stones, shells, and other ornaments. Okay, now this is something we document carefully in Who is Adam. There was a time when anthropologists presumed that they were burying their dead. And the evidence for that is they find a Neanderthal skeleton within 30 feet of some flower pollen. 
And so they're presuming that this flower pollen was something that was placed over the body and was part of a burial rite. While it's possible, it could be that they were uh, using these things for food, or it could be that the pollen is there simply by chance, not by design on the part of the Neanderthals. Well, the pollen thing certainly isn't conclusive, but it certainly isn't the only evidence we have either. We find Neanderthals in graves and caves where the bones surrounding it, like animal bones, show signs of wear and predators, where they show no signs of that at all, which is evidence that they were buried and covered quickly. They've also been found buried along with artifacts, which suggests a ritual burial. There's also no evidence that Neanderthals ever built any housing. Uh, we do see evidence that they took advantage of caves. Well, there's also absolutely no evidence that early Homo sapiens built any housing either. Think about it for a minute. Anything they would have built probably would have fallen down and rotted away after a few years after they abandoned it. Well, there's been a revolution in this in the last 10 years. I mean, what you're describing is a story that scientists had of Neanderthal a decade ago, which was that Neanderthals uh, were like us, and it's true. They were tall. Uh, they were completely bipedal. They could walk as easily as we could walk, um, almost as easily. And, uh, you know, they had brains the same size as ours. Um, our brain is no bigger than a Neanderthal brain. Um, and they were well adapted for cold weather. And the presumption was that Neanderthals simply intermarried and interbred with modern humans, and that many of us in this room today uh, have Neanderthal of blood within them. Uh, some of you wives might think your husbands have Neanderthal characteristics, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's all been completely overthrown. Well, we covered this in the first video, but he said here almost the exact same thing, but let's just let him go on for a minute and then a quick correction on it. And the reason, primary reason that has now been uh, tossed away uh, is because of DNA evidence. Uh, the DNA evidence tells us definitively both Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA uh, that there is no biological link whatsoever between humans and Neanderthals and that Neanderthals went extinct rapidly shortly after the appearance of uh, human beings. So we went over this in the last video, so I'll just go over it quick. But uh, anyone that has ancestors outside of sub-Saharan Africa has up to 4% Neanderthal G DNA in their genome. Now, this is from the nuclear DNA. This is not from the Y chromosome or the mitochondrial DNA that he's talking about. We didn't have the study published then, so that doesn't make him correct. It just means that his assumptions were wrong. And we now know they did not wear clothes. They did not build houses. There is some evidence of uh, carbon char near Neanderthal sites. And the presumption there again was that they must have been able to domesticate fire in the same way that early humans did. But the scientific literature is now has a consensus opinion that this was simply chance. At best, the Neanderthals were taking advantage of wildfires. Uh, we don't even have any evidence that they ever cooked their food. Uh, but it's possible they were taking advantage of these wildfires for warmth or whatever. Uh, but most people think, well, it's just like, you know, fires start. And the fact that we see charcoal near uh, a, a skeleton of a Neanderthal shouldn't surprise us any more that we find charcoal near the site of uh, a skeleton of a deer. Well, there's lots and lots of evidence that Neanderthals controlled and mastered the use of fire. So we have fire pits that we found along in the layers with them and in caves. There's evidence that they made tar by boiling down birch bark and making an adhesive out of it. And even telltale scratch marks on many of their biface hand axes, where if they had scraped pyrite against it, it would have had caused sparks and made fire. Now, I'm just simply saying that uh, the evidence that they had religious services, wore clothes, uh, had advanced tools, and uh, you know built homes, uh, that's all gone by the way based on the latest research. Actually, it wasn't even true at the time, and more recent research shows that he's totally wrong. In fact, the very latest thing to withstand is that there was a bear cult on the part of the Neanderthals. And you'll see we got several pages on that and who was Adam. Because what they found was that Neanderthal bones are in the same place in a cave with bear bones. And the assumption was that Neanderthals were using the bones of these bears as part of a religious practice. The consensus view now is that the bears displaced the Neanderthals out of the cave. 
and that, in fact, the bears were eating the Neanderthals rather than the other way around. <laughs> so uh, both bears and Neanderthals in a cold climate would uh, want possession of a cave. Now, it could be that the Neanderthals won. I don't know who won the fight, but the whole point is the fact that you find the bones of bears and the bones of Neanderthals in a cave simply means that both of them, at some particular time, were using the cave for habitation. That's also evidence that the Neanderthals were not building elaborate homes because we find them most frequently associated uh, with caves. You know, I was disappointed to hear this. I mean, I read the Clan of the Cave Bear, the whole Earth Children series when it came out. You know, as the books were coming out, I, I saw the movie and I thought, Hugh, you're just bumming me out here. So I Googled it and found this. Was the bear the first god of people? Mounting evidence suggests the existence of a bear cult as early as 80,000 years ago. Is it a myth or is it a reality? It was a time when the bear was comfortable in his dark cave. The caves are corridors in time, preserving for posterity the passing of the animal. It was a time when reindeer wandered through Central and Eastern Europe. The cave bear lived in Eurasia until the end of the last ice age. He shared the lands, forests, mountains and caves with the Neanderthal people. They have a different uh, uh, behavior and sometimes quite human behavior. Right. That is, that from, from, yes, from this is the supposition that, uh, that people considered bear not like a normal animal, considered like a sort of brother or so. Yes, and right, from so here come a very yeah, complex really. prehistoric spirituality yeah. related with the cave yeah. bear. So I guess I can rest easy for a while. It hasn't been decided yet, but apparently no one ever worshipped the saber-toothed cat. And their population was always low. And so, but this got us into a discussion in Dallas, because Neanderthals, like a lot of these uh, non-theist anthropologists of 10 years ago, today still interpret Neanderthals as fully human, and not just Neanderthals. I was surprised that they interpret Homo erectus as fully human. Now, Homo erectus, morphologically, is really different from uh, human beings. But they claim that in this room today, there would be descendants of the Homo erecti, uh, as well as descendants of Neanderthals, and that we all interbred. But the DNA evidence is definitive that that, that couldn't have happened. The, the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens I dealt to. By the way, when they say Homo sapiens I dealt to, it's a tropical Neanderthal. So a little bit different body shape because it doesn't have to deal with the cold. Uh, but in every other respect uh, has Neanderthal-like uh, features and dates back to the same time as the Neanderthals, namely about uh, you know, 80,000 to 160, 170,000 years ago. Okay, so here's Homo sapiens at all too. It's considered by some a subspecies of Homo sapiens, but it doesn't have any Neanderthal features. We just happen to have a Homo sapiens skull, a Homo sapiens adultu skull, and a Neanderthal skull at the museum where I volunteer. So this morning I took the opportunity to line them up so we can look at the similarities and differences. Now this Homo sapiens adultu skull in the middle is from an exceptionally large individual. They were all a bit large, but you can see the basic skull shape is the same as the Homo sapiens on the left with the exception of the eyebrow ridges. The brow ridge in the Homo sapiens adultu is like almost like two separate ridges where it dips down in the middle, where it's straight across on the Neanderthals. The Neanderthal skull on the right is much more elongated or football shaped, and it has no forehead. The Homo sapiens adultu skull on the left has a bit of a forehead. The rest of its skull is shaped just like the modern Homo sapiens. The most obvious difference, though, is in the rear. The Neanderthal skull on the right has a much broader, wider skull at the rear. Homo sapiens adultu in the middle, however, is just like Homo sapiens on the left. So what was it that Hugh Ross said again? When they say Homo sapiens adultu, it's a tropical Neanderthal. So a little bit different body shape because it doesn't have to deal with the cold. 
uh, but in every other respect uh, has Neanderthal-like uh, features. Well, I think it's obvious that Hugh Ross has just been looking at Neanderthals in the wrong way. I think he got everything wrong in the lecture, except maybe for the cave bear. He might have been right about the cave bear, but we're just not sure about that yet. What do you think about his lecture, Bonzo? Are Neanderthals smarter than a chimp?